Uh, moving on, unless you have something, anything else. In the middle of our content sandwich today, a uh, section that I am relatively excited about, um, and I don't know if you entirely are, but X One Direction member <laughs> Harry Stoyles has put out his third album called Harry's House, which reminds me of um, Harryhausen. Harryhausen was the guy in charge of all of the stop motion in early, like King Kong. He did the stop motion for the first King Kong and um, Ray Harryhausen. That's what it is. So I hear Harry's house and I think Harryhausen or Harryhausen's the restaurant from Monsters, Inc. Anyway, I have been kind of a fan of Harry Styles solo work since his first album. There's a song called Kiwi that came out that a uh, cover band on my college campus did shout out chocolate in your pocket um and yeah it sure sounds like a college band absolutely uh i mean they're great they're great dudes and uh kiwi what was so unexpected about that was it's just it's just a rock song it's just it's very it's very from my ears perspective like 60s rock influenced driving you know rock song and i asked them who does that song and they're like harry styles and i'm like no fuck are you kidding me harry wrote that song or at least performed it and like co-wrote it so i checked out his first album and lo and behold i liked it i didn't love every minute of it because there's still even on the new album you can tell what songs in one direction he had a really big hand in writing because those sort of melodies bleed into his solo work. Um, like on this album, um, Oh, what's, what song is that? Is that little freak where they have the, and I'm like, yeah, that's all. That's a one direction song already. I'm pretty sure I've already heard that melody, but um, yeah, and then he put out his second album, Fine Line, and everyone loved Watermelon Sugar, and now he's on Harry's House. And Harry's House, at least on the surface, I like. I, I don't say, I wouldn't say I really, really like it. Like, it's not going on my, you know, best albums of all time at all. But as far as a pop record goes especially with the kind of rock influence that this particular artist has. There's a lot of hints and love for synth pop from the eighties and psychedelic ish rock from this, the seventies and late sixties. And, um, one of the reasons why I thought you would maybe appreciate it is I know for your, your album's video, I suggested after laughter by Paramore and one of your criticisms was there's a lot of vocals and there's not really a whole lot of space to let the song breathe. Whereas on this album, I feel like even if there were like vocals happening, it was just altered enough to sound like a synth or another instrument. And there are sections in some of these songs that just play out like instrumentals. Um, so I was like, maybe David would appreciate that, but I want to hear your thoughts because we were kind of listening in and out. What was the first song called? Uh, music for a sushi restaurant. Yeah. Um, that horn section was in my head, like, since I heard it. Mm. And I can see, I, I see why you like it, because there's a lot of shit going on. Yeah. In, like, especially that song. Mm -hmm. There's just things on top of things on top of things. It's all production stuff. Yeah, going on. And, well... That's our washer. <laughs> and while I wasn't like hating my life, like I like listening to Kanye West or anything. Yeah. I was like, I don't think I want to listen to this again. <laughs> Especially boyfriends. Fuck that song. Mm. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that about boyfriends. <laughs> Cause I, here's, here's, here, here's my biggest thing with, uh, Harry. Um, I think one of the, reasons why people like Harry so much part of it is is the celebrity of it all right like everyone kind of knows him to some degree and people who are are very into pop culture are gonna kind of understand who Harry is as a person 
And that kind of adds to the appeal of his music because then you hear certain lyrics and you're like, oh, this relates to this aspect of his life or this story that he's told, blah, blah, blah. Not that I know any, you know, significant Harry Styles stories because I don't really follow him that closely. But um, other than he's dating Olivia Wilde right now, which is wild um, because she is incredibly attractive and also was married to Jason Sudeikis like a year ago um, or maybe a little bit longer than that. I don't know. But it's 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 like, damn, he can really pull whoever he wants, can he? And there's some songs on here like Matilda. I know a lot of people really like because it's just him and an acoustic guitar. And the acoustic guitar line, that's the one I was telling you was like a really interesting line. And just the way that they play the acoustic guitar is, is un, it's so unconventional. Um, but yeah, it's, so going back to knowing Harry as a person, lyrics are a huge appeal of this particular brand or this pocket of pop music. It's just knowing the person informs the lyrics and vice versa. Not really knowing Harry as a person, there were some lyrics in here that I thought were were really insightful. Like Matilda kind of reminded me of my baby sister because there's a whole, you know, the whole thing is about how like you don't have to love your family if they treat you like shit. Um, but just know that there are people that do love you. And I was like, that's really sweet. And then there, there are lyrics like in, um, uh, what is it? Drive slow. I think someone made the connection to one piece because there's a line in there, uh, where he's like T with a cyborg. So any one piece fans out there, you know, Frankie, you, you know, you know, Frankie, we love Frankie. But, like, there's some, you know, that's, like, psychedelic rock. Like, there are a lot of songs in psychedelic rock that have lyrics that make no fucking sense. And so, like, there's a lot of this on this album. Um, I really like Daydreaming. I really like Satellite. I think Satellite has a cool, like, arena rock feel to it, especially when there's, like, the bah, 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 you know? Was that the one where, like, there's, like, a deep, like, like yeah. Deep- I, f- I hate songs when they do that. Uh, um, especially high pitched things. Mm-hmm. Like what's that goddamn song? Um, um, it's a very common tool in pop music these days. Um, don't stop! Don't stop! Don't stop! Da da ba ba da. Yeah, that song has like a. It's the stupidest fucking thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a. It's because on one hand, I have to admire how producers and, and people that are putting these tracks together are utilizing the human voice in a different way and almost turning them into a separate instrument. But on the other hand, I get it. It kind of sounds like chipmunks. And some songs you're wondering, could you have just played this on another instrument? Like, could you have just played this melody on an actual synth or something like that instead of turning someone's vocal line into a really high pitched, you know, synth sound. But yeah, there's a lot of that on this album. There's a lot of that in, I mean, most, most of the billboard, you know, top charting artists right now. It's the same thing with like horn, like horns in pop music, like specifically saxophones in like 2013, 2013, 2014. Yeah. Talk Dirty to Me by Jason Derulo that had the, that thing yeah there and there was just that whole like year or that whole summer it was like oh we're just and then like you know the izzy is iggy azalea song that had the the saxophone in it it was like there are trends that happen in pop music that stick around and every top producer in the industry is just using that sound because an artist will hear it and they're like, I want to do that. Or, you know, a management team will be like, I want my song to sound like this. We got to get a single out like that. So the, the voice pitching thing is just in right now. And it sucks because if there's a trend going around that you don't like, if it's in pop music, it's going to probably be around for a little bit and you'll hear it multiple places. So, you know, Harry is not immune to that. I'm sure there are a lot of powers at work that are out of his control um, not to kind of shift blame away from the artists themselves. Cause it ultimately is still his music. But, um, at the end of the day, I like it. I I've gone back and listened to a couple of songs just to kind of get a better idea of how I really feel about it. Um, but thanks. Thanks for sticking with it. 
And, you know, again, I'm, I'm glad that like you didn't hate every second of it. And hopefully there were some parts of it that you, that you enjoyed, but, um, it's just, I have a really hard time separating the artist from the art or whatever that saying is. Yeah. It's the main reason I don't listen to Guns N' Roses because mm. Alex, Axl Rose is just a piece of work. Yeah. And I can't help but think of shitty ass One Direction when I'm hearing this Harry Styles album. Yeah. And they're... F- I made a whole video about, like, how they ripped off a couple, like, classic rock bands. Yeah. And I, I don't know who's to blame. Probably wasn't Harry. Or it could have been. I don't know. But whoever it was, I can't forgive them. Yeah. So... And to be fair, uh, the rest of One Direction they aren't really doing anything <laughs> at the moment. It's kind of really just Harry that's kind of emerging into the zeitgeist. I I kind of, especially with boy bands like this, the thing with boy bands, unlike other bands, is there's always a standout, right? I mean, I guess that happens in regular bands too. But in boy bands specifically, they're boy bands for a reason. Like, you know, Backstreet Boys and, uh, you know, uh, what, 98 Degrees, they've gotten back together since the 90s. But for the most part, boy bands are just, they're just experiments in raising famous artists from teenage years, kid years. That's all NSYNC was, too. They got, they got put together because a couple of them were on the Mickey Mouse Club. And One Direction got put together because a couple like all of those members had tried out for what is it the x factor in the uk and then simon cowell was the one that was like we're gonna put y'all in a band we're gonna put all five of you in a band and then you're gonna compete together and lo and behold it worked who folks just want to disembowel he opens his mouth always says something foul is that is that an eminem lyric (laughs) it's weird al oh (laughs) uh but yeah But, but it was from the song where he's parroting eminem uh couch potato Sounds very from lose yourself. Yeah. Bum, bum, yeah. Bum, 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 yeah bum, that one. Bum. Mm-hmm. So I like to think of Harry Styles as this generation's Justin Timberlake, or maybe, you know, it happened with the Beatles. It happened with Simon and Garfunkel. It happened with Genesis. Um, so every band and every group has that one member that's going to really, really stand out. And I respect Harry for kind of embracing a sound that he kind of had an influence in One Direction. Um, There are a couple of songs that stand out that are very, like, acoustic, rocky. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, And separating the art from the artist is is really difficult for for some uh, folks. So, yeah, Harry's House, I enjoy. It's not going in any top 10 or top five or anything for me however it was a relatively enjoyable experience 